Welcome to the really useful podcast. I'm Christian Collin. With me is Gavin Phillips. Hi, Gavin. Hey, Christian. How are you doing? Not bad. You? Very well, thank you. Very well. Excellent. Uh, we are a pair of writers from MakeUseOf.com, and uh, we are here to give you the kind of uh, easy entry into some tech topics that you may be, they may perk your interest, but you realise that it's to do with technology. You think, well. I don't want to know about all that. I haven't got time for bits and bobs and gigabits and gigabytes and what have you. Well, you, you don't worry about it because we're here to sort of like make everything clear to you. Uh, so we are going to go through four main topics this week. We're going to look at uh, places to find new skills to learn online. We're going to look at whether it is safe to shop on wish.com, uh, which you may use through the web or through the app. Uh, we're going to look at some portable apps and we'll tell you what portable apps are and the benefits of them and we're also going to look at how to get a free domain name and website which seems I mean you'd be silly not to wouldn't you I think you would be a bit silly not to yeah absolutely okay uh, it's 2019 in last week's podcast we had a little bit of chat about uh, places to go to uh, do college courses online but those aren't the only things that you can learn Obviously, you know, there's more to education than college courses. You know, every day, as uh, one saying goes, is a school day. Uh, have you learned any interesting new skills in 2019 so far, Gavin? Um, I haven't quite learned them yet, but uh, I have started a course on uh, VMs and virtualization, uh, which I am planning to get more into within the next month or so when I've got a little bit more free time coming up in March. Mm. Uh, but definitely the online learning is uh, gives you a lot more scope to to do what you want doesn't it it certainly does i've done a few courses online as uh, as mentioned last time i did uh, a couple of writing courses i've done something with the uh, u e a you have to be very careful when you say u e a in case you say u a e everyone thinks you've been um, very uh, different yeah on, on maneuvers with uh, extremists uh, no the the university of east anglia i did a uh, free screen white writing course with a um, couple of years ago, which is very good. And I've done something similar with uh, one of the uh, free uh, course courses. Uh, anyone who listens to last week's podcast will know. But I've also um, done other stuff that I've paid for and other stuff that's been free. And, you know, th- there are many places we can go to online to learn new stuff. Um, Degreed, for instance, is described as a springboard with learning pathways. And you can learn a number of things there, like serious topics like data science and break it down into bits that you can digest and, and learn from. Uh, you might have articles, videos, podcasts. Learn anything is, a, is another one. How easy is it to learn something new when the path is laid out for you? It should turn out that it's pretty easy. Uh, and, you know, you might be learning anything from a, a new language to a new programming language or your first programming language. Uh, you might be learning about biology. You might be learning something related to your work. Uh, uh, there's, I mean, as ever, we've got show notes, so you can check what we're looking at here. Uh, what what stands out to me is how easy it is to learn something new on the internet. We have, let us not forget, in the in our pockets, we have access to the complete, the complete work of recorded human knowledge everything everything every little 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 bit <clears throat> it is absolutely insane to consider that oh absolutely even from now to 20 years ago the, the difference yeah. is mind-blowing really isn't it yeah well 10 even 10 <clears throat> years well 10, 10 years ago things were a lot slower 20 years ago like you say you know the majority of learning was in books and cd roms yeah yeah Oh, God, you remember firing up in Carter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> free, free with Windows 98. Yeah. <laughs> Although the uh, the quiz game in Carter was always quite exciting. Do you remember that one? You have to go through the different rooms and answer questions to get to the end. No, I never did that. I oh, did that. I, time I, I, to I, go and find a copy of Carter online, mate. I was put off the whole having an encyclopedia on a disc because um, if you guys earlier when I was at college, the college had... And I think they they rented these, which is very astute of News International. Uh, The Times and the Sunday Times archive 
on wow. a vast collection of CD-ROMs. So oh, you wow. can go, go back about 10 years or so and look at virtually every story that had been published. Uh, and it was a bit of a bit of a pain to, to use the thing, really, um, especially on all sort of 386s, as they were at the time. So mm, I was kind of put off using an online encyclopedia, uh, well, not online encyclopedia, it was like a disk-based encyclopedia because of the trouble that I'd had with accessing old stories on the time. So, uh, but yes, so, and these these types of websites that we're discussing now, these um, websites that teach you skills or websites, as we discussed with college classes and that, they, they, they're there to basically funnel the information to you into kind of a, lo- a learning shape it's it is it is wonderful that that information is available and it is as we said <clears throat> remarkable that it's accessible from the phone in your pocket so i suppose the 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 key takeaway from this is don't waste it there's stuff out there that is free absolutely and you can learn something new it's stuff that 20 years ago would have cost you hundreds if not thousands of pounds to learn it's now free and it's in your pocket definitely i think within that as well uh if you're just getting into online learning, the Learn Anything site is uh, really good for laying out the different pathways that you might want to take within the, your subject of choice. Uh, and adding to that, uh, Course Route is really good because you type in your subject matter and it brings up a nice long list of all the different courses, different levels, so you're beginner, advanced, expert, etc. Uh, whether you might end up paying a fee at the end to get like a special certificate or whether the entire thing is free, uh, if it's like with guided with a tutor and so on. So course route and learn anything are a really good way to assess what's out there for you. Excellent. So as ever, check out the show notes, get the links to the articles. Concern this one uh, is a, a f- a, um, a a list of five sites that's been compiled by our colleague uh, Psycho, Psycho Pasu. So uh, we'll move on. Wish dot com. Have you ever bought anything on Wish, Gavin? Um, no. <laughs> okay. It's not really my my cup of tea, to be honest. Um, but I can definitely see why people would be interested in what's well, being sold there because i mean by the looks of it on the, the face value there's some phenomenal deals going on aren't there well do you know what i am going to challenge your preconception there on wish.com i have bought a finger exerciser for guitar playing <laughs> a pickup for acoustic guitar okay that you'll you'll notice a slight theme developing here yeah uh um I also what oh the, this this is awesome okay it's a it's a <laughs> it's a kind of um, die press in the shape of a plectrum which basically lets you turn a credit card into a plet- into three plectrums. Oh well, that's quite cool. Yeah, that's just three things I bought on Wish. Um, yeah. And uh, the, you know the, the I've never used the website. I've only used the mobile app, and that is fiendishly simple to use, scarily simple to use. Uh-huh. A child could use it, which could learn. You know, it could uh, land people in trouble. But there's there's a vast number of things on there that are worth checking out. Uh, there's also, you know, there's counterfeit stuff on there as well. Yeah, yeah. That's the impression I got was that it was is sort of like a really quick uh, access version of AliExpress or Alibaba, where, yeah. like you said, if you're not careful, you could quickly rack up a nice little bill and not realise quite what you've done until it lands in your your checking account or whatever um i went through quite a few when we were doing the show notes i went through a few different uh options that were on the site and just kind of cross-checked them against amazon uh against amazon reviews and stuff mm-hmm. uh and there was like a there's a portable uh it's a portable mini projector it's got a yg 300 um and the crossed out price that it allegedly retails for is 140 mm-hmm. Uh, British pounds. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in dollars off the top of my head, but it's showing here it's it's retailing for 26, which on the face of it is a fantastic, fantastic deal. Uh, but you jump across to Amazon and it's retailing for 36 pounds. So obviously you you're making a 10 pound saving. You're not making a no. 114 pound saving as as it would claim. So I think the importance is cross checking everything you're going to buy. Yeah. Uh, on the basis that 
it's all coming from the Chinese sellers, isn't it? So yes, yeah. those prices could be massively inflated. Like I saw uh, night vision goggles, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm fairly sure just shine a green light into your eye, and they're marked down from something like where is it? They like 138 pounds down to eight pounds. So within that, obviously it's fake, and you know you're going to end up green lights in your eyes. So that's not good. It shines a green light into your eyes. Yeah. Oh, this is another one. This one is a, a 100,000 <laughs> milliamp hour battery. So that's 100,000 allegedly, and that's for 11 pounds. So <laughs> I mean, you have to take these things with a pinch of salt. But like you have found, there's obviously some decent, decent stuff on there. I think if you can cut through the the obvious scams, like the the two things that I've mentioned there, there's obviously a lot of good stuff. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to have a quick peek into Wish myself on my phone. And uh, I'm uh, going to avoid... Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out later. Right. Because I want to just give you... I give I, I, if anything pops up I might do, but uh, <laughs> I'm I'm I just want to give you an idea of some of the things that I've seen. That's good because we need we need to see both sides here because I've yeah I've definitely gone in with a a very negative mindset towards this. Sure, so. sure, which is actually which is absolutely fine because he's you know there is the opportunity to save money if you if a lot of people are buying the same thing then the, you know it's a bit like um. Gr- in that respect like groupon that you get it applies discounts for mm. lots of people buying yeah um and you'll find that there's free stuff like there's um i can get a capo for free oh nice that's just come up now so that that's an actual free purchase um plastic capo for electric or acoustic guitar free vat excluded admittedly and you pay for postage um but right next to it there's a, a t-shirt that says best wifey ever I bought my wife a few, <laughs> bought my wife a few gifts on here, so you know it's um you know free plectrums, bunch of free plectrums, loads of free plectrums. Uh yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, it's there's a lot of free stuff on there. It might not be what you're looking for that's free, and it might turn out to be not that good. Uh so far the free stuff I've seen has turned out to be good enough. Yeah, good enough. So that's yeah. Fine. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I've been impressed with it. And, you know, I'm not going to... There's, there's things on there I won't touch with a barge pole. I yeah, mean, I, yeah. I, I've um, I've seen that there's Transformers and Lego on there. And they're not the real deal. So I'm not going to buy them. No, I think in that as well, The uh, and to be fair to Wish, the review system seems pretty good from what I read. It doesn't look like the reviews are gamed or that there's like a lot of reviews been removed. Uh, it seems like there's a... Uh, a healthy mixture of positive and negative reviews. You know, they don't seem they don't seem forced or anything. So that, that's yeah, quite sure, a good yeah. sign. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's worth checking out. Now you may feel that it isn't entirely <laughs> your cup of tea. I I would say is check. Um, and this kind of um, big thanks to Emma Roth for uh, compiling this look at wish.com and she has some good steps which basically uh don't ignore reviews as we've said be aware of the long shipping times because it's, it's going to be shipping from china it's going to take a while to get to you watch out for misleading descriptions and i would say like Gavin says cross cross reference wherever you can with other sites um and if you're buying clothes or any kind of attires choose the right size because they do use different sizes in china and you can end up buying something too small or too large. And then there's no going back. Well, I mean, maybe I there is. There might be returns. Maybe there is, but it, it might. It's going to take a month or Sundays to actually send it back. back. <clears throat> it's going to be a slow process. I would also say that in terms of the mobile app, it's very easy to buy something. It's very easy to accidentally buy something. I haven't done it, but I found my finger sort of hovering in that area of, oh, crikey, that could have gone wrong. Does it have so, like a one... Does it have one-click purchasing in the app or anything? Or? It has sort of slide purchasing. Oh, okay. Which, uh, you know, it's not... So it's not super instant, but you could... 
Exactly. Yeah. You could waver too much. Exactly. You could you could just knock it accidentally. So, you know, keep an eye on what you're doing. Don't sort of like throw it in your pocket without locking your phone. That sort of thing. But uh, yeah, check it out. And if it works for you, it works. For you. If it doesn't, then you know, move on. Get, yeah, and you've not lost too much on. as well. If it turns out to be a dud, you've not lost too much money. And Precisely. if it's if it's great, then you you've got yourself a cracking bargain. So it is plays into that sort of really nice little area, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay, portable apps. Uh, Gavin, you know what a portable app is, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Would you like me to explain? Go on then. Go on then. The uh, portable apps are apps that don't need um, installation. It's like an app that you could throw onto uh, a USB, say, that you keep in your pocket. Um, whenever you go to a computer that's maybe not familiar or uh, that you use frequently but don't own, um, you can bring out your USB stick and you can load the app directly from the USB. Uh, and that's great because it means you can carry around a plethora of applications without worrying about where you're going to end up, what computer you're going to be on. You're always going to have the programs that you know how to use at any one time. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, w- we've recently uh, updated our list of the best portable apps for Windows. So... As Gavin explained, these are apps that don't require installing. You just run them, which is, depending on how you use computers, this could be a massive time saver. For instance, if you use computers in a library or cyber cafe and you've got USB, you've been permitted USB access, then you know you can just launch stuff and use it. It doesn't get installed. Ah, uh, you know, the benefits are considerable. There's all sorts of applications from. Um, the GIMP GNU uh, image manipulation program. There is the Audacity audio editing software, which I'll be using for this podcast. There's uh, there's, there's just a vast number of media players, games, VLC player, so much stuff there that you can just run from a USB stick. Particularly useful for uh, low spec computers as well. Yeah, really handy, um, especially as you can load things on uh, like Tiny Browser, uh, which is like really helpful if you are using a low spec computer. Uh, and things like if you're using a low spec computer, you could use something like uh, Notepad++, which is uh, completely portable. Write up what you want to write. You can add some uh, formatting in there as well. It's a full feature text editor with syntax and and whatnot, uh, and it just sits in your pocket. So things like that are incredibly handy. Absolutely. Have you used uh, portable apps for any purpose at any time? Uh, when I go away, uh, I tend to load up um, just like a backup USB uh, in case things go awry and I do end up having to use a, a public computer. And it usually has uh, LibreOffice on there, LibreOffice um because writing is the the name of the game so as long as i can access that i usually chuck um google chrome on there which you can also get a portable app version of um so then you at least know you're going to have a decent web browser uh and an excellent free text editor so they're both worth keeping in your pocket but i think if you check out the article which um as we've said, will be in the show notes. Um, you can find out the full list, which is it's really quite substantial, isn't it, Christian? It's a massive list, yeah. Uh, it's recently been uh, compiled by uh, Canon Yamada, one of our colleagues at MakeUseOf.com. And again, you'll find it in the show notes, as Gavin mentioned. And Okay, that's interesting. Ah. Whoa. How? Oh, that's strange. Um, okay, <laughs> I just noticed one of the screens. One of the screenshots is uh, appears to be mine. Um, <laughs> uh, to see my dad's name is staring back at me um, on, on the on the pigeon app. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at that. I was like, I wonder who Dave Corley is, because I know a guy in uh, Northampton where I'm from called Dave Corley as well. So <laughs> there's a lot of them about. It's really frustrating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Okay. So that is that. Portable apps. Um, and as with any of these things that we're discussing, if you've uh, got any insight or anything that you want to discuss concerning them, then do get in touch with us uh, through uh, Make Use Of, where you'll find this uh, podcast listed, or on on your preferred podcast. Uh, social network you'll also find uh, a route through to us either on facebook or on twitter you're on twitter aren't you gavin i am on twitter i am at gavin spavin uh so tweet me with your ideas anything you want to learn anything you want to know anything you want to us to break down uh on the really useful podcast uh please tweet either of us or any of the the rest of the really useful podcast um presenters Absolutely, and you'll find me as uh, at the Gadget Monkey, all one word, on Twitter. Let's move on to our final item: how to get a free domain name for your website. Gavin, what's going on with this? This is madness, surely. Well, there's domains out there, and they're free, and they're waiting for you to come and get them. Uh, there's quite a few ways to do it as well, which is surprising because when you think of it. You know, you think of the big websites that you browse every day and you think, well, they must cost a fortune to run. It must cost a fortune to buy the domain to begin with. Uh, But in reality, if you're just looking for a domain name for your business or if you want to start a blog, there's so many ways you can get a free domain name. Um, The first one is free website building services, WordPress.com. So many websites use WordPress. And a lot of them start out with a WordPress domain name. But there's a lot of other good competitors for uh, WordPress these days, like Wix, Squarespace, uh, Weebly, uh, and even Google Sites. You can get a really decent website up and running. Some of them you are going to end up with um, the sort of host site name within your domain name. Sort of uh, it'd be wixsite.com forward slash your domain name or your domain name dot wordpress dot com uh, there's two examples right um another way of doing it is actually signing up for uh free web hosting so sometimes when you buy a domain name you need a place to actually host it on the web you know or else no one else is actually going to find it you'll have a yeah a domain name no one can find it because you haven't got any web hosting so there's a, a few web hosts the, when you sign up for them, uh, they give you a free domain name alongside that. Um, and one of those is X10 Hosting. Uh, and they're one of the most popular options and no adverts, unlimited storage and bandwidth. Uh, and you get some free email accounts chucked in there as well. So that's, that's always a good option. Uh, and a final one I will share with you is free domain sites. Um, a few years back, they drastically increased uh, the amount of domains that were available to everybody. So instead of it just being the .coms, the .orgs, .co.uk's and so on, you now have .tk and .ml, .gq, .ga, and the list is just, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, And some of these websites can actually make better money through the advertising um for you perusing through their site trying to find a decent domain name the amount of advertising that you actually look at gives them more money than it takes to to buy these domains to begin with because they're just you know they're 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 to the infinite and beyond um so there's a few good options there's dot tk uh there's another website called name and there's another one called free nom and you can go on there you type in the website name and it will give you a massive and I genuinely mean massive list of domain names um, that you can take for absolutely free so they're all really worth checking out especially if you're trying to launch a, a blog your first blog that sort of thing get into grips with a bit of uh, writing or development or what have you so really worth checking out yeah so th- these are names that already exist that have been used for a different purpose previously uh what the final one the dot tks and dot mls and what have yeah, you yeah no no these are all um uh, right. they're, they're they're top level domains um 
but in the the days where they expanded it so they they went from say dot com and dot co dot uk and then they expanded it to you know we got like dot food and dot press and dot music right, and, what right, have you. Right, right. and then they realized there's such a demand for domain names uh and it's in part to do with the ipv4 you know how we all access the internet they realized there was such demand they should just open it up to all sorts of different things so loads of people rushed in and registered all manner of different lettering and that's why we have it a lot of them uh relate to different country names so you could end up registering for you know a different country uh but it makes no difference really so it, it really is worth checking out because you can get you can get as many free website domains as you want. So go mad. Go absolutely crazy. Wow. That's, um, have you got your own website, Gavin? I have, but there's nothing on it. I've got to, I've got to admit my website is gavinphillips.co.uk. Um, but there's nothing there. I'm afraid I just use it as a parking center for, for my email address. Do you, do you, do you, host and run your own one i um i do and I'm, I'm actually in the middle of launching another site which isn't quite ready yet so i'm not going to really talk about it uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. Intriguing. intriguing indeed yeah um but i do have a site at uh, christiancorley.co.uk which is basically just it's basically, it's basically there for clients more than anything else. It does have a sort of vague blog uh, and a bit of the odd story on there, but it's mainly a yeah. uh, this is what I do. Come and find me, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's mainly what it is, really. So uh, yeah, I mean, I've had that a few years. It's um, I always find the most difficult thing about registering a domain name. Is thinking of a name and finding one that you can use. These days, it seems that all the best names have been taken, and they're sort of being, you know, they're just being. Well, people are taking the cleverest squatted. ideas. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like <clears throat> saying you can buy this, but it's going to cost you two grand or whatever or more. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But anything so, that's got uh, missing vowels as well, if you thought you were going to oh, yeah. make a startup with missing vowels, you're going to be all hard-pressed. Yeah, definitely. So I think anything that cuts the price of registering a domain name is a, a good thing, definitely. And if it's even free, then even better. Yeah, <laughs> everyone likes free stuff. I mean, it's worth a check out, you know. It might be that it's not right for you, but at least you know what what to look for from then on as well so absolutely yeah totally totally right okay so that was uh the really useful podcast uh you'll will probably find us on itunes if you haven't already uh you'll find us on makeuseof.com you may even find us on youtube we're on spotify as well now aren't we oh and spotify as well don't forget spotify yes uh, that is where you'll find us I'm Christian Corley. Uh, my colleague here is Gavin Phillips. In this week's show, we have discussed four key topics. We have talked about where to learn new skills online, whether it's safe to use Wish to shop online, some of the best portable apps you can use on Windows, and it's worth mentioning a lot of those across platform as well, and where you can get free domain name for your websites we are here to make the world of tech easy for you if you don't need that you probably need know someone who does so if there's someone that you need to help get to speed with what's going on online in their computer on their phone on the tablet with their console with a tv set top box smart tv etc it's, there's a good chance that we can help out either with the topics that were pre-selected or by addressing a question directly. So um, pass on this podcast, spread it, share the love. Let's get people aware that technology does not mean nerds in glasses. It does not mean, you know, jargon that no one else understands. It's part of our lives. 
let's make sure everyone is using it and using it safely until next week it's goodbye from us <laughs>